Obsidian just turned these ugly metadata fields of your notes into shiny, user-friendly properties just like Notion. But as useful as this new feature is, there's still a lot of missing functionality and hidden potential. So in this video, I'll show you some ways to enhance them with community plugins so you can go from a properties beginner to pro power user. Before we go into the enhancements, let's first explore the core functionality of this new properties feature, just so we know what we're working with. So if I create a new note just by clicking on this icon, you don't see any properties initially, but to add one, we can just open up command palette by pressing control or command P and then searching up add file property. Alternatively, if you prefer keyboard shortcuts, you can do the same by pressing control and semicolon. So if I run this command, we can now get our first property for the note. It defaults as a text field. So on the left side, we would just put the name of the property. And on the right side, we would put the value. And if we wanted to change, we can just choose a different one like checkbox. Sometimes you will have to update the value to be the correct format. We can just click on the warning icon and then change property type. There we go, turns into a checkbox. And we change the date. We'll have to do the same thing. And yeah, for the date, we can just either type in the date or we can click on this icon and choose it in this calendar view. So before, these properties were just simply front matter fields at the top of your note. If you switch it back, as you can see, it just has the field and the date. But with the new property setup, there's just a lot of more user-friendly ways to change the values like we just shown with the checkbox and the date. On top of that, for the date specifically, it comes with an additional button you can press to jump to this day if you have a daily note for it. So I think it's a very simple change, but still just very useful. But of course, these properties are stuck at the top of your note. What if you had a very long document with a lot of text and you didn't always want to have to scroll up to edit a value for a property? Luckily, we can also view them a different way, which is through the sidebar over here. So to see this view, we can just open up command palette again, search our properties, and then we can choose show file properties. So just like the menu at the top, we can also edit it here. And if you wanted to take it one step further and see all properties from all our notes, we can just run the command to show all properties. So if I had another note and let's add another property field two, very creative with my names. You can see it shows up here. Maybe this was a podcast note and this was just the link to the podcast and let's say you had another podcast note for a different podcast thanks to this view you can easily see all your different podcasts just by clicking on the field that is related to all of them which in this case is just podcast link so if we click on this the search pane gets populated with this search searches for all notes with the podcast link field and it returns both of our podcast notes. If we want to only specifically search for a type of podcast link, maybe we just wanted to find all the ones from the infamous 222 podcast, we can add a colon and then type in the thing we're searching for. And if you want to search from the search pane without having to click on any of these fields, when we have an empty search pane, we can just choose the property search option, choose the field, and then choose the value. Now that we know its core functionalities, let's start exploring how we can start enhancing it. So continuing on with our podcast note example, let's say I was watching an Andrew Huberman podcast on Focus. And as part of my different properties, I had things like the URL of the podcast. It had a rating just based off of how useful I found it and a link to the podcast note of Andrew Huberman's podcast. And lastly, a checkbox for me to tell whether I finished 
the podcast or not. If we continue with the basic functionalities of properties, for each new podcast note we want to make, we would have to add the properties every time. But instead, when I create a podcast note, I want all of the fields to be already there. Luckily, we can use templates to automate this. So if we head to settings, community plugins, turn on community plugins, and then search for the plugin called templater, we can install it and enable it. To create our first template, we would just have to create a new folder to store all of our templates in. I'm just going to call it templates. And in this folder, I'm going to create a new note called podcast episode template. So I'm just going to add the fields I did in the previous note, URL, podcast, rating, and finished. So to get this template to actually work, we can head back to settings, go to templater, and we can set the folder location of our templates to templates and we can enable this feature called trigger templater on new file creation. This is whenever you create a new file, we have a chance to automatically insert a template instead of having to manually do it each time. As you can see, that opened up a new section in the settings called folder templates. This is where we can choose our podcast episodes folder and then add the podcast episode template as the template we want to use. So now if we go back and we create a new note in here, we can see that the properties are automatically added and the template is applied. Another podcast episode. And with the new properties feature, we are automatically suggested different properties. So now we can automatically add the fields into our new note, but is there a way to also automatically add the values? It's time to start talking about variables. Let's say I had different daily notes in my Obsidian Vault. Maybe this one was today, September 1st, and I had different settings and I had different fields like summary, rating, and the week. Obviously, you can't really automate these two because it's something you fill out on your own. But for the week field, what if we could automatically just link it upon the note creation? In this case, the week in question would be week 35 of this year. So yeah, what if we could just, instead of having to manually type it out, it'd be created just like that. So if we head to the templater documentation, we can see all the variables available to date, variables, file variables, even front matter variables. Interesting. Are all at our disposal. So when I think about how I would actually calculate the note it's related to, there would be three different steps. First, I would find a way to get the title of the note, since it's the day that we're taking a note on, find a way to convert it into a date, and then with that date, calculate the week it's related to. So to do this first part, if we go back to the documentation and go to TP file, there's one called title, which will, you know, give us the title of the note. Just to show how it works, if we add the syntax to use it, it's just less than then percent tp file title, and then close it. We can open up command palette and then run the command to replace templates in the active file. If we use it, the title gets put here. So next, we need to find a way to convert this text into a date, and we need to find the way to calculate the week it's related to. And we can do this using the moment library. So first we will need to wrap the variable in the moment function. So with the moment function, it will take in two parameters. It will take the first parameter is the date we are passing in. And the second parameter is the format of the date we're passing in. So since ours is in year, month, date, I'm just gonna put year, month, and date. 
then after, we can do dot format and we can change it to the format we want, which in this case is year and then the week. To add a W, I'm just going to surround the W in square brackets and I'm going to add the two week numbers since there could be up to 52 weeks in a year. So now if I run the command again to replace the templates in the active file, we can see it turns into the week we want. So the last thing I'm going to do is surround this in square brackets and then paste it in here. So now if we run the command, the link gets created. Of course, this is not in a template note, so I'm just going to simply rename this into my daily note template, undo the replacement of the variable and get rid of this. And now we have a fully working daily note template. So I'm just going to go into settings. In the core plugins feature, I'm going to set the new file location of a daily note to be in daily notes. And I'm going to choose the template as our daily note template. Oh, I'm also going to move this over to the templates folder. Move to templates. So yeah, if we open up command palette, create a new daily note or open today's daily note, boom, automatically generated. And we can easily click on the link to view our weekly note. So yeah, if you want to explore what other variables are available, you can check out the link in the description to get access to the documentation as well. Anyways, continuing on with this daily note example. As part of my daily note workflow, I have a reflection section I fill out at the end of the day, which asks me for a summary on how it went. Yes, I could just write the summary into the properties field by scrolling up or using the sidebar, but I want it to feel more natural and still be part of the section. So recently, I solved my own problem and made a plugin to do just that. So to get this to work, you'll have to download two plugins. First is the data view plugin, search up data view, and then install it. This plugin lets you create property fields from within your text instead of just at the top in this properties menu. And then the second plugin is my plugin called inline front matter sync, which provides sync from these text field properties into the properties menu. Unfortunately, the plugin is still being reviewed, so it might not be available in the community plugins page. So if it isn't, you can download it a different way by using the Brat community plugin, which will let you install beta versions of plugins. You can read the instructions on how to download this in the description. I'm just going to install it, enable, go to options, add a beta plugin, and then paste in the link to the plugin. I'm going to add it, go to community plugins, and enable it. So yeah, let's say I had a very long daily note and at the bottom was where I had my reflection. And let's say I wanted to have the summary here. First, I'm going to switch to the file properties view just so you can see the sync. Okay. So to create an inline field, all we have to do is add two colons to the field name. As long as the field name does not have a space, I think it should be turned into a, an inline field. So if we add two colons and then start typing, we can see that it syncs to the summary property. You can also tell it syncs when it has this underline, which is customizable in the settings of the plugin. The reason why I do have this underline rather than keep the name the same as the one in the properties field is because if you have things like data view queries and you wanted to show the summary of the note, but let's say there was two summary fields, it's going to end up duplicating for that note. So I thought it was a good idea to have this internal prefix to differentiate it from the one in the property view. So now we can just continue on with our summary and just elaborate on it. Maybe we can say that today was a good day. 
had ice cream, started playing around the new properties plugin, and ended world hunger. And just to show what it's like without the plugin, if we disable it and then try to update this, it doesn't get updated in the properties menu. The last enhancement I wanted to share with you is a new problem that comes up with this workflow. Because as we can see, for the summary field, I can only have a single line, which is whatever content is after the field. For any bullet points under, it doesn't really show. And if I wanted to access it through a table like this, I would have no way to. Because let's say, in my weekly note, I wanted to be able to click on a button or somehow navigate to the summary section without having to enter the note and scroll all the way down. This is where we can use the power of Obsidian links. So first, we can create a header for the summary section in our daily note. And as part of this field, we can add a link to this specific header in the note. So I'm going to create square brackets and, and to make sure it links back to this note and not the header of a different daily note, I'm going to use the title variable we used earlier. And then I'm going to add a hashtag to indicate, what the heck, type hashtag to indicate that I want it to link to a specific header in the note, which is the summary header. And instead of seeing this in my field, I'm going to add an alias to this link just by adding a straight line and then putting an emoji. So yeah, if we replace the templates in the active file, we can see it's just an emoji. When we click on it, it'll take us to this link. So if we go back to our weekly note and then look at the table, if we hover over this, we can see the contents of the summary header in its entirety. And if we wanted to, we can click on it to jump right there. Of course, you would have to add this setup. So in our daily note template, we could just do the same. So if I were to rename our current daily note and then run the command to open today's daily note and then run the command to open today's daily note again, we now have this hoverable icon that we can click on for our daily views. As a bonus, there's one last powerful plugin I have to share, but I needed a fully dedicated video to showcase its features. You can learn more about it by watching this video here. If you instead want to continue learning more about Obsidian, you can download my free templates and email course in the description. Anyways, if you found my advice to be helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. This has been John Maverick. Stay mindful.